Animal products, including meat, cheese, and eggs, contain carnitine and choline, metabolites that are converted by gut bacteria into trimethylamine, TMA. TMA then travels from the intestine into the blood and then to the liver, where it is converted uh, by liver enzymes to TMAO, trimethylamine oxide. So why is TMAO, what is TMAO and why is it important? So first, uh, TM, higher plasma levels of TMAO are associated with an increased risk for heart attack, atherosclerosis, and uh, cardiovascular disease. So let's have a look at that data here. So uh, on the uh, y-axis, we're looking at um, cardiovascular disease-related outcomes, MI, my, myocardial infarction, uh, PAD, peripheral arterial uh, disease, so that's atherosclerosis of the peripheral arteries, coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis of the coronary arteries, the combination of those two, PAD plus CAD, and cardiovascular disease, CAD. So on the x-axis here, we have levels of TMAO in quartiles. So one would be the uh, lowest quartile of TMAO in blood plasma, in plasma and blood. Uh, and then two, three, and four are sequentially higher levels of plasma levels of TMAO. And what we can see is that for each uh, quartile above the lowest quartile of TMAO, there's an increased risk for each of these cardiovascular disease-related outcomes. So uh, it isn't just an increased risk for heart attack, atherosclerosis, and CBD. Higher levels of TMAO are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So let's have a look at that data. And that's what we can see here. Cumulative survival on the y-axis plotted against uh, time. And compared to the lowest TMAO uh, quartile, so people who had the lowest level of TMAO in their blood, the two highest levels of TMAO were associated with a 71% and an 86% increased all-cause mortality ACM risk for the Q, uh, Q3 and Q4, the third and fourth quartiles of plasma levels of TMAO. All right, so based on these two uh, uh, data, uh, the idea would be, okay, if you reduce animal products, you'll, re you'll reduce circulating levels of TMAO, and then you'll potentially reduce risk for heart attack, atherosclerosis, CBD, and all-cause mortality. But there's more to this story, and more to this story involves the impact of fish. Uh, fish directly contains TMAO. So how does fish contribute to the TMAO story? So um, what happens if you eat different meals, uh, whether it's fish, chicken, uh, red, or processed meat? So this is that study. We're looking at plasma levels of TMAO on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So they gave people these uh, uh, four different meals, again, chicken, red meat, RM, PM, processed meat, or fish in this case, which was haddock. And they looked at their TMAO levels in blood uh, in the first week, W1, week two, and week three. And then uh, at three different time points after eating uh, each of these uh, foods, so T0 would be the baseline plasma TMAO measurement, T2, two hours after eating it, and 24 hours after eating uh, each of these four meals. So first, what we can see with the arrow is that uh, chicken, red meat, and processed meat had uh, people rate that had the lowest levels of TMAO and almost no spike in TMAO levels in their blood after eating them. However, look at the fish uh, meal. So people that ate the fish meal compared with their baseline values, we can see the highest levels, dramatically higher levels of plasma uh, TMAO when comp compared with each of the other meats. So if the TMAO story uh, uh, and its link to disease is true, we'd expect to see a higher all-cause mortality risk for fish eaters. Is that true? Uh, and actually, that's not true. So this is data in a meta-analysis from a meta-analysis of uh, 400, about 400,000 people uh, in 10 studies. Uh, so uh, risk for all-cause mortality on the y-axis plotted against fish consumption. And what we can see is that the lowest all-cause mortality risk is present for fish consumption in the 50 to 100 grams per day range. So uh, when considering the contribution of fish to the TMAO story, there must be other factors that can help clarify. Uh, it can't be as simple as TMA, higher TMAO in blood, uh, higher disease and mortality risk. It can't be that simple. So what are some of these other factors? So uh, in this study, uh, Groupin's group decided to look at the impact of kidney function on all-cause mortality risk. And they separated subjects into two groups based on their kidney function. So here we're looking at uh, uh, the estimated glomerular filtration rate, EGFR, and they used uh, plasma measurements of creatinine and cystatin C to determine uh, uh, EGFR, which is a measure of kidney function. And in this group, uh, the average kidney function, or EGFR, was 76. 
Now, what we can see for the crude association, so simply the unadjusted association for plasma levels of TMAO with all-cause mortality risk, we can see a significant uh, association for TMAO with ACM risk, 29% inc uh, uh, increase. Uh, and then when they included other factors into that statistical model, so model one and model two, model one being adjusted for age and sex, model two being adjusted for age, sex, and urinary acid excretion, UAE, which is another measure of kidney function, we can see that subjects who had an EGFR less than 90 had a significantly increased risk of all-cause mortality for each of these models or in the unadjusted model. So what about in subjects that had an EGFR greater than 90? That's what we're looking at here. So uh, in, this, in this group, the EGFR, average EGFR, uh, was 104, so good kidney function. So what was the association with plasma levels of TMAO with all-cause mortality risk in people who had better or good kidney function? So first, from looking at the unadjusted association, so simply uh, plasma levels of TMAO versus all-cause mortality risk, there was no significant association. S uh, similarly, when they included age and sex, model one, or age, sex, and urinary acid excretion, uh, 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 sorry, urinary albumin excretion, that's as a measure of, uh, an additional measure of kidney function. Uh, so regardless of which model that included these factors, the association between plasma levels of TMAO with all-cause mortality risk was not statistically significant. So that's what this data shows here. So kidney function may have uh, an, an important uh, role in the TMAO story. So if that's true, what about the data that I showed earlier for the association between TMAO with risk of heart attack, ather atherosclerosis, and cardiovascular disease? So if you notice on, in this plot, they have the unadjusted uh, association for TMAO which each, with each of the cardiovascular-related outcomes, and then under that, they have the adjusted data. So in their adjusted models, they included estimated creatinine clearance, which is a measure of kidney function. So superficially, one could say, well, they adjusted for kidney function, uh, and this disputes your hypothesis that kidney function may be the, uh, one of the most important factors in the TMAO story. Uh, however, upon closer inspection, the average uh, GFR, uh, glomerular filtration rate as a measure of kidney function in this study was 73, and the range for the subjects in the study was 60 to 86. Now, if you remember in the previous slide, all-cause mortality risk was increased for EGFR less than 90, but not higher than 90. So this data agrees with that. These subjects have an EGFR less than 90. The all-cause mortality risk data had an EGFR with less than 90. So it's, this would further suggest an important role for kidney function on the link between TMAO with risk of disease and death. So as a final uh, nail in that coffin, uh, here we see plasma levels of TMAO on the y-axis plotted against quartiles of EGFR. So uh, quartiles of uh, kidney function increasing from 66 to 91, 91 being good kidney function, 66 being the, the worst kidney function. And what we can see is that people that had EGFRs uh, higher than 91, so good kidney function, had the lowest levels of plasma TMAO. Conversely, the subjects that had the worst kidney function, 66 uh, for an EGFR, had the highest levels of, T, uh, of TMAO. So once again, it seems like kidney function plays an important role in the TMAO health and disease uh, and mortality uh, story. So if your EGFR is greater than 90, going back to the ori original slide, knowing that TMAO is formed by eating animal products, including meat, eggs, and cheese, and fish. So if your EGFR is greater than 90, eating these foods may not be an issue in terms of TMAO-related risk, but EGFR declines during aging. And that's what we can see here. I present this data in, in another video. I'll, I'll link to that uh, video for kidney function in the right corner. So this is a, a data from a study of about 378,000 people where we can see, clearly see EGFR, uh, decline for EGFR uh, plotted against age. So around 40 years of age for both men and women, EGFR drops on average to less than 90. So in that situation, I'd say uh, reducing animal products if your EGFR levels are lower than 90 may be important for de decreasing risk of TMAO-related health issues. All right, that's... Uh, all I've got for now, you can find me lots of places online. Have a great day.